Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do an anti-haul. So for those of you that haven't seen this before, I'm going to run through some products that have caught my eye online. Um, some are new, some are just new to me. And we're going to talk about why I would or wouldn't purchase them. And ultimately, I won't be buying any of them. In case he starts up again, um, Manny, the very loud snoring, Frenchie Pug Cross has just taken up residency underneath my chair. So if suddenly it sounds like there's like garden equipment going off, it's not anything like that, it's just a snoring dog. So um, the first things, I've tried to put them into categories to make this easier, but the first things that were really kind of piquing my interest were shimmery, bronzy, highlighty type things. The first one was from MUA, this is the Light Luster Shimmer Drops um, for five pounds. The thing that puts me off this, the thing that's great is the price. The thing that puts me off this is the pipette. I'm not a fan of anything with a pipette. It just doesn't make me want to use the products. So I feel like it's kind of messier. I don't know why it's so popular to put things in a pipette. I don't get it. The droppy thing, I'm not a fan of. Um, even with serums and things, I use too much of them anyway. So it's not really helping me to monitor how much I like to meter out, how much of it I'm using. It's not great for me. Um, I get that if you are mixing this in with something, it's probably better. But for me, the way I use it, I do definitely prefer a slightly thicker formula and something that I can squeeze out of a tube. Also then, if I'm absolutely in love with it, I know that I can get absolutely everything out of the packaging because I can cut it open. Now for five pounds, less worried about that, but there just is something about the pipette that really puts me off. But that is interesting at that price point. I got really into kind of liquid and cream highlighters last year. So I'm thinking of trying some, now we're getting kind of more into summer in whatever that means for 2020 now. Um, this one was really interesting. Now is ink, nails ink, incredible. Is that, that's nails ink, right? Yeah, it's their beauty brand, I'm pretty sure. Um, you Glow Girl Body Highlighter Blur. So I'm thinking this is supposed to be a similar thing to Vita Liberata Body Blur, which I'm a really big fan of. It's very expensive, but it's nice to have in. I've got a video um, showing you kind of the before and after and giving kind of my uh, rundown review. It's not the best of the best. I know it's really, really nice. I really like it. I don't think it's a million miles away from any other body makeup, but there is kind of a shimmer to it. And for how often I use something like that, I don't mind that it's expensive because it's just kind of to have on hand for a little bit of extra confidence on a day when maybe I would be getting dressed up and showing a bit more skin than I am prepared to. Um, however, this at 10 pounds, I would be more interested in. Now it's only 51 mil, it says on this picture. Presuming this is a full size, 51 mil is not that much. Let's just check. Let's just do a little Google. Vita Liberata body blur and see how much is actually in that product? Because there's got to be more than that. Yeah, okay, okay, it's 100 mil. So if there's 100 mil in the regular size and it's 29.95, it's still a much better deal to get the one from uh, Ink. Ink, incredible, I can't get on board with that at all. Um, it also is very, it's not like a tan. This is more, it's a body highlighter, but it still says a blur. So you wouldn't use this all over. This would be more something that you would kind of use like on your collarbone, just areas that you would want to highlight, maybe down your shins, that kind of thing. Um, so then number one, you would use less of it, but on the other side, it's not necessarily going to replace body makeup. It's something I would probably still use on my face, even though it's specific for body. I also use the body blur on my face. Um, and it's just, I would kind of like to get this. I would like to have this to try because I really want to know what the texture is like, how easy it is to blend, because that's a big thing when it comes to liquid highlighters. Um, and I, I just feel like this is going to be a nice one. Um, also this, I haven't really used a body oil ever, ever slash for a very long time. Um, but I think that I could be convinced that this was a better, cheaper version of something like body blur, because that is kind of a bitch to remove, truth be told. It really does last well, I like it. Like I say, there's a review video there, not affiliated with Body Blur at all, but I do think it's quite a good product. However, a body oil would, number one, stretch a little bit further, be easier to apply, you're not quite so worried about it being kind of uneven, you don't have to buff it in quite as well. Um, and it's gonna be so much easier to remove at the end of the night. Pop in the shower, quick, kind of wash off, you're not gonna be kind of scrubbing as if you are with regular body makeup. So I could definitely be persuaded. Also like that it's a pump. I like that you can probably end up pouring out as well. And it says it's got an intoxicating scent that will transport you straight 
Uh, what was the rest of that sentence? That will transport you straight to the beach. Yes. High shine, non-greasy formula, non-greasy body oil. Ensures comfortable, hydrating, sun-kissed glow while tropical scent transports you to paradise. I think I could get on board with that. Natasha Denona Bloom Highlighting Blush. Now, the reason I want this, because under normal circumstances I wouldn't, is because it's 16 pounds and Natasha Denona products are so expensive. The palettes are like way beyond my budget. I wouldn't even consider it. I don't care how great it is. I'm not spending that kind of money for a palette. Like so much money. Some of them are like hundreds of pounds. Hundreds, hundred plus. Um, very, very expensive palettes. And I know that people love them, but that's just not ever going to be me. Um, I've got some, I think it's Makeup Atelier, is that right? Very expensive palettes that were sent to me and I mentioned them in a video and said, look, these are great. Some of the best eyeshadows I've ever used in my life, by far. Still not worth it to me. I still don't think it's worth that kind of money for an eyeshadow palette. And so I'm probably never going to try Natasha Denona eyeshadows under normal circumstances. And so a blush from the same brand at a more affordable £16 is very appealing. This is supposed to be a universal shade. There's just one shade, I believe. Um, there's a waiting list for this. So I don't know if there's gonna be more information about it, but it seems like there is just one shade. It's one shade that's swatched across three different skin tones and it's very interesting. I'm very into a highlighting blush. I'm very into something that just the both, both things. It's not gonna to be too much in terms of pigment because I'm heavy handed when it comes to color on my cheeks. And I like to put a highlight from here to here. I don't know if you can tell, but I like that. Um, it's definitely my kind of thing. I think 16 pounds is pretty reasonable. Something that I've been desperately refreshing all of the websites for has been the new Revlon Super Lustrous Glass Shine Lipsticks. Since I think it was Jessica Braun talked about these and I'm thinking this is the right, the right thing. Um, she talked about it being almost a dupe for the, um, come on, color, color balms, glossy balms. What were they called? We loved them so much. There was like cherry pie and red velvet and what were they called? Lip butters, lip butters. I was obsessed. I've still got some. And since she said that, I have been like, when is it coming? When are they coming? And since the shops reopened in the UK, um, I haven't been back to Boots in store or Superdrug. So I haven't actually seen in store whether or not they're there, they're not online yet. I found them on this one website called onbuy.com. Never heard of it, let me know if you've used it before. But it's 12 pounds and they've got it there. They've got one um, called Glossed Up Rose. It seems exactly what I want. Standard free delivery to the UK. Very tempted, not going to. Not going to because I'm really trying on a no buy this month. But once I'm off that no buy, when, once I'm like allowing myself to kind of spend again, this is definitely on my list. I'm really hoping that they come to a boots near me so that, well, I was gonna say so I can swatch them, but we can't swatch for a while. It's gonna be a while, guys. Um, I'm probably gonna have to just rely on some PR swatches then and make some choices online, but I really, really wanna try these because I'm so much more into that kind of glossy lip again. I did see that L'Oreal have um, a Colorish Shine lipstick that's, I don't think this is new at all, but I've never really taken much notice of it before. I know they used to do, I don't know if this is a repackaged version, because they used to do some that I really liked that were kind of a shine. Um, but this has got 231 reviews. This is not a new product. And I would kind of be now more interested in going back and trying this. I also saw that Maybelline have um, a Colour Show Shine lipstick, and this appears to be new. So I'm thinking this is back, like we're back to like the water shine, that kind of thing. We, we're over the matte, we're over the liquid lip thing, and we're back to the more comfortable, more flattering, and I am completely on board with this. I've been very, very much into my Dior Lip Maximizer, um, which is like a sheer, it's like a, a gloss comb balm, sheer wash of color, very, very comfortable to wear, just beautiful and I've been looking, as some of you know, for dupes for a long time and this came out from Huda Beauty, the Silk Balm Hydro Plumping Lip Balm and this was top of my list, like as soon as I'm buying beauty again, as soon as I'm allowing myself like a little splurge, this was top of my list. Number one, it was always out of stock everywhere but also looking at this, it's only had uh, a couple of reviews and they aren't great. 
Um, one of them says, does not live up to the claims. Not pink tinted, rather a pale peach. I mean, that wouldn't necessarily bother me. Does not plump up the lips, not even slightly. Again, that's not something that would bother me because the Dior um, lip plumper thing that I use, that doesn't plump my lips either. But that's not what I'm expecting. Um, someone else has put like anything else. A bit sticky feels weird. That would put me off. Um, it's, I think it, it, oftentimes it tends to be that your expectations are very high. One person said, keeps lips very soft, amazing, not too heavy and very subtle. I suspect that that's how I would feel about it. However, the stickiness in that one review would put me off and it's still not mega cheap at 18 pounds. So maybe at some point I will try it, but I'm not quite as like desperate to try it as I was. Um, the Barry M That Swell XXL Plumping Lip Gloss. Now, this is something that looking online, I was like, okay, this might also do the job because I just want really a sheer wash of color. I don't want something that's gonna dry out my lips because lip glosses can definitely be dehydrating. And I don't want something that's gonna be like, like feel gross. I want something comfortable, more balmy than anything else. Um, the only thing with this is it's definitely more on the plumping side. The reviews all talk about like it to be very, very tingly. Um, the reviews are positive, but it's like, wow, I wasn't expecting it to tingle this much. So something I might try for 4 dollars uh, but I don't think it's gonna be the dupe that I want it to be. Um, we did talk about dupes in a previous video and I just kind of wanna put it out there. The only reason I'm looking for a dupe of the Dior Lip Maximizer is to share with you guys because for as long as it takes me to use that up, I would be happy to repurchase that for the rest of my life because it lasts me for a long time. Mm. Also, I'm obsessed with this, obsessed. It's the Shaken Lemonade from Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I don't have it very often because I have no reason to get in that queue other than to get this. Um, but today I decided to go out and treat myself and more than happy that I did because it's also they've made it a little bit stronger so I've added more ice and it's lasting me a lot longer than usual. Right, I was looking at some setting sprays because I'm such a big fan of the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. Uh, again, I know you guys will have heard me talk about this a lot, but I am. I really, really, really love that product. And a big part of it is that I feel like it does give me kind of a soft focus. Everything kind of melts together. It just makes everything look very natural. And it's again, flattering. It's all about kind of slightly blurring and flattering. And this says, Nip and Fab Makeup Blurring Fixing Mist. I don't know whether or not I've heard that before. So it says, minimize the look of pores and imperfections with Nip and Fab Soft Focus fist <laughs> Fisting Mist. Fixing Mist to give your skin a filtered glow. That is very appealing. Um, for 15 pounds, a similar price to the Morphe one that I use. And there's one five star review that says, this fixing spray does give a beautiful finish to your face and makeup blurring imperfections and sitting makeup, setting makeup well. The spray is a fine mist which people like and there isn't a strong fragrance. There isn't much of a smell at all. I feel like I might like this. I don't know if I would really miss the aerosol, but I'm really tempted to try that because I feel like it could be really, really nice. That said, it's not tremendously different in price or different in price to my Morphe one and I do really like the Morphe one so. Do I try it, do I not try it? I don't know. Um, talking of Morphe, and I swear I didn't even plan that, uh, the Coca-Cola stuff is now on Boots, which is very exciting. I saw this online and was like, I'm not usually into kind of the collabs and the things that they do like this, but this, this is very appealing. I love, I love all things Coca-Cola. That kind of branded stuff really is, they kind of just got me. Uh, looking at the palette, I like like the exterior of the palette, the whole like collectible element of it is really cool. But the actual palette itself, I don't think is for me. As with so many Morphe eyeshadows, they've just gone too warm. It's like blues, warm, warm browns, and some reds and oranges in the middle. It, there's no kind of, they, I feel like Morphe can't make, and please tell me if I'm wrong, if there's a palette I need to try, let me know. But I feel like Morphe can't make a really nice cool toned shimmery brown. It's like it, it doesn't exist. I have not, I'm yet to find that, um, which is super frustrating because that's exactly what I want. I've bought ones, I've bought like 12 pan palettes from them before and just been like, I don't get it. 22 pounds, that's not too bad a price. Um, Morphe eyeshadows are hit and miss for me. Some of them are great, some of them not so much. 
Um, I, I would be potentially tempted if the colours, if they just put in some good, cool toned browns, but I feel like it's just not a good mix for me. Um, something that potentially I, I would be more interested in would be the lip collection. So they've got um, a set of four lip glosses and they're kind of, I don't know if, if they are glosses. They look like they're glosses from the swatches, but they're like high pigment glosses. So let's see. Um, I love it. Your thirst for life is real, babe. It's all consuming and everyone wants in on those good time vibes. Create, connect, challenge, do it all with this effort effervescent collection of innovative lippies and iconic shades. This tells me literally nothing about the product. Nothing at all. Um, four super shiny, never sticky lippies that are all down for a little adventure with a classic red, three sparkling neutrals. You'll give everyone something to talk about. I would be super tempted, truth be told. Um, especially that kind of nude pink looks really nice, but I think the other ones I would get used of as well. Again, 19 pounds is not the end of the world, price-wise. I think if I was gonna get something from the collection, it would be that. Um, and also, like, kind of throwing it back to the Huda thing, um, I saw this when I was on Feel Unique. Haven't heard of this at all. I don't know if it's new, but I want it purely, I mean, two reasons. I wanna say purely because it's called Legit Lashes. And I use the word legit legit all the time however looking into it that's what drew me and I was like I'm gonna I'm really gonna need to try something called legit lashes however looking at it it's actually very interesting there's a volume side so it's basically two mascaras there's a volume side and a length and a curl side and then there are swatches of using it with just one of both or both together um layered very interesting really interesting idea 195 customer reviews, four and a half stars, is very promising. I'm not normally someone who likes a high-end mascara. I'm a big fan of a lot of Maybelline mascaras, but this could really pull me over to that side because depending on how long it lasted, I feel like 24 pounds is money that I would be prepared to, to spend to try something that is giving you two options. So absolute worst case scenario, if I hate one of the brushes, I have a different brush and it will fit in with that product. So like I'm thinking, worst case scenario, it's probably gonna be the same mascara with two different brushes. So if I'm using one brush and I'm like, this is clearly the brush that is working for me, then halfway through when that's completely dried out, I'll swap it to the other one. Now, you know, that might not work out that way, but I'm thinking it would be one of the better ways of trying a more expensive mascara. Um, something else in terms of like weird collabs, Barbie and Glab Glow, Glab Glow, Glam Glow have done a limited edition super mod Activated charcoal clearing treatment mask. I haven't disliked Glam Glow collabs in the past because previously they've done them with the Gravity Mod. I didn't see one for Gravity Mod. Maybe I missed it. But the Gravity Mod is a, like, I love it. I have purchased that several times. Full price. Fully prepared to do that again. It's a peel-off mask. But there's something about it. I don't know what's in it. I don't even care. Even if it's completely psychosomatic. I've used it. Lee has used it. And Lee wanted one of his own. This is like... Next level instant results. It definitely looked like my skin was more even, plumper, everything just looked more perfected and there were less fine lines. And I can completely accept that that is not a lasting thing, but sometimes it's nice to have like an instant yet temporary result from something. Um, so I love the Gravity Mod. The Super Mod I never really saw that great result from. I, my skin isn't particularly bad, so maybe that's part of it. But also, it's exactly the same product. So it's a it's a, a Barbie mask, but the product seems to be exactly the same. So I don't really get it. It's not pink or anything. I know that that's not for everyone, but if I'm buying a Barbie mask, I want it to be pink. Um, and I think lastly, is this it? Oh, I have a couple more things. Um, one of the last things is the Glow stuff from Boots. So they have brought out a bunch of different products called Glow and very, very affordable. This serum is four pounds. Um, so a Glow Essence, not really any reviews on anything yet because they're so new. Um, oh, I tell a lie, no review on the Essence, but there is a review on the Glow Tonic. This is again four pounds, 100 mil. So obviously it's called Glow Tonic, which is just smart because everybody knows, you know, if you're looking specifically for Glow Tonic, Boots have clearly created this because they know from their website traffic that people are searching for Glow Tonic. So it's actually called, the whole range is called Glow. This is called the Radiance Tonic, but they've branded it on like, the title of it is Boots Glow Tonic. 
I would very much enjoy being in the room with Boots and Pixie when they have that conversation. Um, so it says, Boots Glow Radiance Tonic clarifies the complexion and smooth skin to give skin a healthy looking glow. It's glow tonic, it is. That, that is exactly what it is. They do cleansing stick, they do brightening mist, they do cleansing oil, um, an eye cream, a gel mask, a moisturizing cream, all glow um, with varying reviews. Most people seem to be enjoying this glow tonic. A couple of people are saying they don't like the smell. Um, but the majority of people in the reviews of this are kind of comparing it to Pixie and saying it's a similar kind of product. I have tried quite a few different glycolic acid toners. And um, while I think that a lot of them do exactly the same thing in terms of exfoliating my skin and kind of brightening everything up, I do think that Pixie has the edge when it comes to the actual condition of my skin and the texture of my skin. It does seem to be something that they have that is a little bit better. I would say the very, very closest I've ever tried is the Aldi one. Um, but even like the ordinary one, I would use them for ages and be like, it's the same thing. And then I'd go back to the Pixie one and think, it's just not the same. I don't know if it's like there's more aloe in the Pixie one and so it hydrates or soothes. I don't know what it is, but for sure I have seen a difference between them. Although again, I would still recommend that Aldi one. I truly think that, that is the closest one you can find when it's available. Um, but I would be interested to try this one because for four pounds, it would be, it would be interesting since it is a product that is always in my routine anyway. Um, the Pixie Plus Vitamin C Brightening Perfector. I just kind of wanted to read about this because I love the Pixie Vitamin C brand and I, I got the impression this was like a before makeup thing. Um, vitamin C infused complexion enhancer blurs and perfects to give skin a dewy radiant finish. Formulated to instantly add luminosity for an awakened complexion youthful glow. Right, so this is definitely like a morning thing. Um, this is something that if you are enjoying a vitamin C like regimen of any kind, you potentially could throw this in in the morning as that, especially right now, really into anything that gives you a little bit of perfection without actually wearing any makeup. Really like their, um, their balm, flash balm. Is it called the Flash Balm? Because I know that the Clarins one was called Beauty Flash Balm and I always have in my mind like, is it? Is it? It's called Beauty Balm of some kind. Um, and it does just kind of like wake you up and refresh you, which is appealing, I guess. Um, and lastly, really lastly this time, I'm going blonde. I know, if you, if you, if you have made it this far into the video, you'll have an opinion about this. Um, and I know that some people will be like, no! Ultimately, I realized after I'd made the appointment, the reason I'm doing it is because it's one of the only things I can control, <laughs> which is hilarious, but very true. Um, I have control over absolutely nothing in my life right now. And so when I was able to make an appointment, I was gonna make an appointment and have my hair cut a little bit because it feels like it's getting knotty towards the end and it needs a couple of inches off. And I thought, you know what? I'm finally gonna do it. I'm not gonna go blonde, blonde. Um, I'm still gonna have some root. I'm not gonna need to go all back all the time. But I'm going blonde, it's happening, it's happening. Um, I've made the appointment, it is happening. I've already messaged my stylist and said, look, here's the deal. I'm already getting cold feet. Don't let me back out of this now. So it's happening. Um, so I was looking at some different like blonde shampoos uh, for fun, because you know, this will be a fun new thing to do. Um, and Aussie have brought out these new ones. So Aussie Blonde Hydration Purple Shampoo. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna want purple shampoo because I think I'm gonna go for quite a warm blonde, so we'll see. But these were interesting. And they've got the, obviously the conditioner and the blonde deep treatment. So this is something that's kind of on my radar. It currently, as I'm looking at it, is in the sale because there's a, like some kind of weird Tuesday sale on as I'm filming this. Um, but, I would very much enjoy your suggestions for um, blonde hair care because it's been a very long time. If you are not wanting to get that kind of icy, ashy blonde, where do you go from there? Like, what what is the thing that you do now? Because that used to be like everyone had to have like white, ashy, very like n absolutely knockout all brassiness, and I don't want that now. I want I want a bit of brassiness. I think I want a bit of warmth. I think that would be more flattering for me. I think I'm more of a warm hair person than I realised. Um, so let me know. I think that possibly the Josh Wood colour shots are going to be my um, my thing to kind of keep the colour fresh. But I would love to hear from you things that you've tried that aren't, that are kind of toners, but they're not like 
blue slash purple shampoo toners. Um, so that's it. Hopefully this was interesting. Um, it kind of ticks the box for me of let's do a little bit of browsing. I got to browse this morning, open some things, get a little bit excited about shopping without actually shopping at all, which is a big plus for me. Um, and I find these a little bit more interesting than hauls from my perspective when I'm watching people talk about, oh, this is, this is available. Um, this is something I'm interested in, something I'm not interested in. I really like anti-hauls. Let me know uh, what you think and perhaps we'll do more. Um, but I think I'm also going to be doing some, um, word is, I've got, I swear I've got lockdown brain. The word is virtual shopping, which again, will end in absolutely no spending of any money because I'm on a no buy. Uh, but let me know what you like in, in terms of that kind of content. Um, I hope you liked this one and I will see you guys next time. Bye.